busted. to you thank you for keeping your dialogue on ray power it's time for political platform whenever you hear that sector my name is shola jayesimi so many things happening in the polity in the last 24 hours well south eastern political elite converged at the alex equeme square in oka a southeast political summit that's what it was called with the call for restructuring getting louder by the day but at the same time, the leaders of the Afeni Fere, who were there represented by their leader, Chief Ayuade Banjo, said, yes, it is time for us to restructure the Nigerian nation. Uh, in the northern part of the country, another group says, look, the call for restructuring must be taken with caution. Oli Sametu, the former publicity secretary of the ruling of, of the main opposition People's Democratic Party, slumped in court. It was a real drama as uh, lawyers on both sides argued over the issue. Well, President Olusha Gobasanjo, former, rather, uh, was also commenting about what he says should be the way forward ahead of 2019. Nigeria's economy has grown by almost 2%. This is according to the National Bureau of Statistics. What does this mean for the Nigerians uh, as a whole? Does this improve the standard of living? These are some of the issues We'll be bringing to you on the program today. My name is Shola Jaisim, and I'm not alone on the program. Adiba Abadu is also on the show. Yeah, uh, the, the last 24 hours, political activities across the country. Uh, uh, you, you've talked about uh, uh, Lucia Gobas, you're talking about uh, uh, 2019 election for the first time in 15 years. Uh, he had he, he, he visited the leader of Afeni Ferry. He has never done that one in the last 15 years. And uh, he, was, he was in Akure yesterday to meet uh, Shifa Shoronti. And uh, that was, uh, for the first time, uh, there seems to be, um, uh, to, to, to share the same view. There was a consensus uh, between Obasanjo and the Afeni Ferry leaders who, who received him yesterday in uh, Akure that uh, there must be what they call genuine change in, uh, in 2019. Well, how that, how that one will be carried out by, by them, we'll be watching out for it. And then um, uh, the, the campaign for the leadership of, uh, of, uh, APC. of APC seems to be on. Yesterday, Adams Oshiomole was in the home of uh, Oji Uzokalu in Abuja. And you may ask, why should we visit Oji Uzokalu? Information available to us uh, indicates that uh, Oji Uzokalu is the principal sponsor of Clement Avery, who wants to slog it out with uh, with uh, with uh, Adams. And the comrade, very smart, uh, seems to be saying, "Well, let me go to let me take the battle to the sponsor, not to the candidate." And uh, from what came out, Oju Sokalu said, uh, "I will support you in, in your ambition to become the national chairman of APC." Is that an indication that uh, we no longer support Clement Avery? We will watch out for it. And uh, today, in, a, in across the country, we are going to witness an unusual thing. We are, we are going to witness men in Kasok. I'm talking of Catholic bishops, Catholic priests across the country are demonstrating on the streets today. Uh, they are joining uh, the Aluta people, or, <laughs> or they, are, they are wearing the toga of Aluta to protest against the what they describe as killings across the, in the land. Mm -hmm. And uh, today. In Makodi, uh, the those uh, the two priests, the two priests that were killed in the course of uh, the attack there, are going to be buried today. And then you have, I think, maybe about seventeen parishioners are also going to uh, be buried. And the 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 Kali priests are demonstrating across the country. And I, I think we will be talking with uh, the spokesperson of the Catholic Church in Nigeria, uh, Reverend, Reverend Father. Father. Patrick Anuluku. Yeah, we are going to be talking with him and he will tell us 
why uh, why would they be on the streets taking over the job of the Aluta people? Mm -hmm. Amici, uh, just before you come in there, as I was uh, driving up to the office this morning, I saw a busload of women. They were singing. And when I looked at uh, the attire they wore, I just saw, oh, these are Catholic uh, women from Benue. Actually, they've driven into Abuja, probably came in last night, and they were headed into the Abuja city centre. Well, I, I think it's a further step from the Catholic Church after they have asked the president to resign because according to them, uh, he's unable to control the killings going on in the country. Maybe this protest uh, is to uh, really give vent to that their position. And like uh, um, Bodhuri said, they have abandoned the altar and uh, they have come to the streets because they were attacked right there in the altar and they believe uh, they really need to get to the city to send the message across. Abbasanjo visiting the Afeni federal, Afeni federal leadership. Uh, so, you know, Abbasanjo, once he takes a position, especially on candidates or choice of uh, a presidency in the country, once he takes a position, he takes practical steps towards actualizing it. Mm -hmm. If there is one man that the international community listens to in Nigeria, is Abbasanjo. He's their first port of call when it comes to intelligence and policy direction on Nigeria. Mm. He will likely uh, be working on that so, same way he's working on the domestic scene. Visiting Afeni federal leadership for the first time in 15 years where he categorically told them that there's a need for two of them, uh, himself and the group, to jointly uh, work against uh, uh, President Muhammad Buhari. Well, uh, you may say that in terms of electoral value, uh, catching votes on ground, Obasanja may not offer much because uh, the two presidential elections he contested and won, he lost even in his own constituency. I was there. He lost in his own constituency. So he may not guarantee votes on ground. But in terms of mobilizing against uh, forming an alliance, local and international, you can beat him to it. The Igbo leaders, a uh, six-year rotational presidency, you know, the Southwest uh, was the first to hold uh, their forum where they articulated their position and said, let's return to 1960-63 constitution. But the Igbo have said, uh, maybe a six-year rotational presidency with each of the uh, other five geopolitical zones uh, having a vice president and that the presidency should be rotational. So many things mm -hmm. they kept, came out with. Maybe tomorrow on this program, we we'll speak to uh, some of them to uh, really uh, span more on that, that summit. You know. Uju Ajaye is also on the platform. Uju, the Southeast. Oh, well, uh, y y y y I think that um, this all underscores the need to sit down and talk towards uh, the much... Uh, touted restructuring of the Nigerian uh, polity. Different zones are coming up with their s different positions. If you recall that Afeni Ferry came up with a, a, a suggestion of regional, you know, returning to regional uh, development. Yes. So uh, the Southeast has come up with its own position, the Middle Belt also. So I, I think that uh, there is an urgent need to sit down and talk and then determine which way the country should go at this mm. time. Well, it's time for us to take your meals. Don't forget that effective the 1st of June this year, our former platform, that's political platform at yahoo.com, will cease to be used for our feedback segment. My colleagues are here with the meals. Thank you, Shola. Welcome to the meal segment. I am Ife Inwa Mwobi. I am Tenikan Akepu. You're welcome. Let's start with a mail from Shwaibu Abdullah. He writes us from Jikwe in Abuja on Olisa Metal's trial. He says, I watched with tears the collapse of Olisa Meto in the court during his trial yesterday, and I asked, are we fighting a war? What type of justice system are we practicing in Nigeria? Is Olisa Meto's health not more important than the money he allegedly owes Nigeria? Inasmuch as I support the fight against corruption, I expect morality to be adopted in everything we do. Olisa Meto's international passport should be returned to him so that he can travel out for medical treatment. The trial can continue if he is considered healthy. May God bless Nigeria. And on to former President of Passengers visit to Afeni Ferry, Salau Sahid in Kujay, Abuja says, former President of Passengers visit to the leader of Afeni Ferry in Ondo State has been described as historic, but the Afeni Ferry should be careful not to fall to Abbasanjo's tricks the second time after what happened in 2007 election. If Afeni Ferry is serious about restructuring, they should not follow Obasanjo because Obasanjo has never supported any idea of a restructured Nigeria. All what Obasanjo wants to achieve is to replace Buhari just like Jonathan. Yinka Odumakin should be invited to speak on this issue. 
And that's all we have for you on today's mail segment. Do keep it coming. The route is still political platform at yahoo.com. It's back to you, Shola. Thank you very much, uh, Ife Inwa and Akepu, for the mails. Don't forget that um, effective the 1st of June, although we've started using the same new email feedback uh, address, it's to political platform at raypower.fm. Political platform at raypower.fm. My colleagues are back with the analysis. Uh, like we said, we will be joining uh, the director of uh, the Catholic Communications, Reverend Father Patrick. Anuluku to give us the reasons why the Catholic clergy, as well as some of their members, are having what has been tagged a, a protest across Nigeria today. Like I said during the introduction, uh, not a few of the members, I saw those from Benue driving into the city center this morning to, for, for the rally which will hold in Abuja. The calls have grown louder by the Catholic bishops. They have clearly called for the president to resign for what they say is his inability to handle the affairs of state properly. Uh, we'll be joining the Catholic um, Reverend Father shortly, Reverend Father Catholic, uh, Patrick Anuluku. He's on the Alumuku. line now. Alumuku. Uh, Reverend Father, thank you for joining us on Political Platform. What's the crux of the Catholic clergy, as well as members with the current state of affairs and the reason for calling this uh, rally or protest, as some have tagged it. We are marching for peace in our nation. We are marching for life in our nation. A life as such when we have no more peace. And without peace, there can be no progress. Without peace, there can be no development. And um, without life, um, we have nothing left. And so we are marching precisely today to underline the importance of life in our nation. Now, um, some of the uh, meetings the Catholic leadership has held, uh, the Catholic bishops had a conference not too long ago. The representations from these meetings you have held, uh, is the current executive aware of I'm talking about the federal government, at least at that level? Now, I didn't seem to get your question fairly well. The, the no, uh, Father, you, 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 the Cali bishops visited uh, the president and they made, they, they made some, uh, uh, they made their position known during that meeting. While some of these concerns were they raised during your meeting with the president not too long ago? Well, the Nigerian bishops at all times have stood um, with the leadership of this nation and at all times have supported the government of our nation, except at times when they see the government is derailing. And you will notice that even in the military era, it was a Catholic bishops' conference and the Catholic Church, which is not directly involved in politics, um, that was able to steer the military out of um, the direction they were heading. And in the past, our church has always stood on the path of what is right and what is good for the nation. We've spoken to the presidency and to the federal government uh, in recent times about a number of these problems coming up. Um, and the failure to act is actually why we are marching today. And we are marching for the first time in the history of this country together in 54 cities of this nation. And that should be enough signal for who has ears and who has eyes to see uh, that uh, there has to be something different, um, you know, in the near future. Now, the, the Catholic Bishops' Conference of Nigeria some weeks ago uh, asked the president to resign if he cannot uh, control the killings going on across the country. Now, this protest, so we say, is the church not venturing directly into politics? We live in a political sphere. As church, we are not passively, in, uh, we are not uh, actively involved in politics. And so, that is why Catholic priests are not allowed to contest for elections. I believe if they were allowed, many would have been urged to move into politics right now. But at the moment when we see that our seminarians 
are being killed. Our reverend sisters are being killed. When we have seen that our priests and um, the members of the leadership of the church are being killed, among many other thousands of people, you know, all these people who have been killed in the past, we are putting them together in this march today. Um, the, 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 a, 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 you know, a killing that is aimed at at a Christian people, at, at exterminating uh, people of a particular faith, uh, is what we are seeing happening. This march is actually underlining that fact and saying that as Christians, um, we pray for peace, but we will not want to see this go in the direction it is going at the moment. But, but having articulated your positions and having presented them to the presidency, uh, would it not have uh, sufficed I I instead of this rally? Sorry, I didn't get that question. I said uh, having, having articulated and presented your positions to the president or the presidency, would it not uh, ha have sufficed you know, for you to even have given him time uh, to act on that rather than uh, b b this rally, even though there's really nothing wrong in it? Listen, I can't hear you too well, but I only can say to you that uh, what we do today is actually to send a message to the entire nation uh, and, and to the entire world already. The entire community, uh, international community, is watching what is happening here. Uh, this morning, I have had calls from uh, international radio stations from all over the world who are asking the same questions you are asking. And um, we are answering them. And um, we are happy that uh, the world is paying attention to what is happening here today. But what we want to say um, by this march is that, as people have said in very simple words, enough is enough. And it must not be taken for granted uh, when the people decide to react peacefully to uh, violence and to attacks. So far, we have reacted um, peacefully. But we want to say to the world, and we call the international community to join us to say this must come to an end now. And we must not see three million people killed as they were in Rwanda before the international community moves in. We call upon the international community, we, th we call upon the leadership of this nation, and we call upon all people of goodwill to see that this is a point uh, at which we cannot go further. And those who are sending the Fulani headsmen into, um, in, into the Beme Valley and into the rest of uh, this part of the Middle Belt in Nigeria uh, should cease from doing so because they will be causing for the nation something which I do not think uh, will be useful for them or for the nation in future. Yeah, Father, uh, if you look at it uh, generally, uh, the current wave of killings in the country, uh, on, not only Christians are falling victims, we also have uh, Muslims who are also falling victims in some parts of the country. Uh, uh, are, you, are, you not, are you not worried about the, the, the fate of, I mean, the, the plight of those who are not Christians too? We feel that um, the Christian population is uh, most affected by what is happening now. Um, we cannot put a, a finger exactly on who is sponsoring all of this. Um, but we know that the people who are most affected in this uh, uh, violence and these killings belong to one section of the nation, to one faith. And we are worried uh, for them. If anybody else is worried about his own situation, he should also raise an alarm. Uh, I think that is, that is important. And what we do today is raise an alarm that there is something seriously happening, especially to the Christian communities of our nation. We'd like to uh, thank you very much for your contribution, Reverend Father Patrick Anuluku, Director of Communications of the Catholic Church. Um, uh, the Reverend Father raised the key point about the fact that the killings need to stop. And just uh, uh, last week, the defense headquarters 
has also started what it has called its own operation in the Middle Belt states. Recall that the army wound up its own program, Operation Catch Race, uh, about two weeks ago. So uh, I'm optimistic that the uh, military will be able to, under whatever guise, either the army itself or the three services, will be able to try to curtail some of these issues. Would you? Just yesterday, they said uh, about 35 uh, militia men are suspected uh, and you in uh, uh, Hellsmen were killed across the middle bed. And uh, unfortunately, the army also lost uh, one person, and one of his uh, uh, men uh, is also declared missing. It tells you that, yes, the killings are going on, but uh, there are countermeasures. Whether it's enough is what I don't know. Yes, uh, 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 it, it is good that uh, the authorities, the security agencies, have risen up to the challenge. I, I think that more than any other thing, what is uh, Important is sincerity of purpose in tackling the killings, uh, sincerity of purpose, and uh, the ability to be able to convince Nigerians that the government and the security agencies are sincere. So long as they are doing this, I think that the people would uh, rest assured that uh, they, they are being protected and that their interests are being taken care of by the authorities. I think all these things get back to the government. Uh, if you recall, there are some uh, Islamic groups that have, before now, uh, challenged the president to deal with these uh, issues. Uh, if you recall, about yeah. two or three of them, they have spoken up strongly in the past, asking the government, take up your responsibility, protect lives and property. And it is uh, solely the responsibility of the government to do this. But we deserve support from every other interest group in Nigeria. It is the government that should be at the forefront. Any killing that is unresolved, Nigeria is not the only place where you kill people, but the only difference here, there, there are countries where you have uh, more killings, but the only difference there is that most times the perpetrators are not uh, brought to book. That's just the problem, and that is where the government must uh, up his game. Uh, we may be overstretched in terms of uh, uh, facilities and men, new brigades, new army formations uh, coming up, but we really need to up again because for the main purpose of government, is first security and second welfare. And they could not, we can't take any excuse when it comes to security. If uh, security is compromised, uh, citizens may be forced to uh, begin Result to defend to themselves and it doesn't do anybody any good. Especially at, in a situation where you have lots of security agents, especially the police attached to politically exposed persons and VIPs. The ratio to secure the civilian populace is dwindling by the day. By the day. Yeah, I, I, I think uh, this issue that uh, the Catholic uh, priests are raising is, uh, uh, is it should be a wake up call on those in, in positions of authority to really do something uh, uh, to curb it because our economy is not as buoyant as we want it to be. We are looking for investors. There is no way we will attract investors if there is a, a season of uh, of a feeling of uh, insecurity across the country. The issue in the northeast, we are still battling with it, and then we have kill, um, killings here and there. I think it's an issue that should seriously attract our attention, and we should do something urgently to halt it. If really we are going to see a situation where others will bring their money to invest in Nigeria. Talking about the economy, the National Bureau of Statistics yesterday unveiled what it calls its quarterly GDP report. Nigeria's economy is said to have grown by. Just uh, over 1.96%. Um, how feasible is this? The cost of living is increasing by the day. Some will say the figures versus the facts in the market. Well, the inflation rate is coming down of just about 12%. For 15 months, we have seen a, a decreases in the inflation rate. Good one. But the uh, first quarter 2018 GDP outlook, about 1.96 or so, uh, is growing. But when you compare with the figure we had in the preceding quarter, uh, last quarter of 2017, there was a decrease. That tells you, uh, after that initial surge, the economy recovering from a recession uh, is not picking up as much as they should. That should worry our policymakers and our economic managers. We did so well in the last quarter, uh, no, October, November, December of 2017, then uh, 2018, January, February, March, uh, we, we struggled. So we really need to, they need to put up their thinking caps why is the economy not growing as much as it should? The way our population is growing by almost 3%, our economy should outgrow uh, the uh, population so that we create more wealth for our people. Even though the distribution of this wealth 
is uh, on if one not just unfair but we really need to get the economy growing again uh, those managing the economy should uh, really uh, take uh, some concern and address the issues it's on this note we'll be calling the day on the program don't forget you can reach us by writing to us on our new platform political platform at raypar.net the old uh, email feedback channel still exists till the 31st of june which is political platform at Rape at polit political platform at yahoo.com. On behalf of my colleagues Uju, Adebayo Bodori, and Amechi Anakwe, my name is Shola Jayesimi.